Hi there, I just wanted to talk through how to use uh, some of the main features of the app, iPad app Graphio. Graphio is a tool that I'm finding increasingly more and more useful when it comes to mapping out and planning ideas and sort of getting it down on paper. What I really like about uh, Graphio is that when you're designing something you can actually create it on absolutely huge canvases so that when you want to come to print it out uh, you can um, do so on uh, massive bits of paper you can have your canvas up to A2 in size and you can export it in vector format in PDF so that if you send it to the printers uh, you know you're going to get a high quality um, really nice large clear document that's going to be really useful for anybody who's going to be viewing it so that's where I start. I always start with the um, canvas when I'm creating a new document. It gives you the auto-sized canvas when you first start. If you use the toolbar down the bottom, you can move across and get to your various different options. But I'm going to start with the canvas, and I'm going to make it quite large uh, while I'm talking with you in here. Let's go for A3. And we can use our two fingers to pinch and move around the canvas until we get it as the size we want it. There's lots of things here we can do at this stage. We can uh, choose to have the snap to grid option on or off. We can use the grid lines to help us line things up as well. And we can have um, shape drawing recognition on or off too. And I'll leave that on for now so that uh, I can show you a few things we can do. So we'll start with doing some drawing. I'll turn the grid off. And down the bottom left hand corner we've got the pencil icon. That's selected so that when I draw something um, it then appears on the page. Undo in the bottom left hand corner. Now when I draw a shape, what Graphio does is it recognises that shape. Okay, really handy and helpful. Use the select tool next to the draw tool so that I can move things around. We can make items bigger and smaller by pinching and uh, moving our fingers apart to make them bigger and smaller like so. Okay. And once we've got our item there, if we want to add some text to it, we simply just tap, double tap on it and we can then just type in uh, what we want, like so. Whilst we're here, it'll be useful to look at the text options. So here we can change uh, the size of the font, we can change whether it's bold or italic or whatever. Uh, we can also choose the alignment left, right, uh, centred. We can choose the font style. So let's just go for... Uh, this font here, you can make it bigger, nice and simply, and you can choose the colour of the font as well. I've chosen white so that I can go to my fill option now and choose a fill colour for my item. And I can have a stroke around the outside as well. A stroke is basically a line around the outside. There you go, nice big stroke, and I'll move across and put a drop shadow on it to help give a bit of impact on that. And I'll do a little drop shadow on my text as well like so, which makes it all stand out a little bit uh, more clearly there. What we can do when we've got our items selected then, we've got a number of options around the outside. Top left would duplicate, and I will do that because I'm going to use that in a second. Uh, we can also pick up formatting from another object um, so that it can be used elsewhere. So if I just make this one uh, a different colour for a second, um, not on its stroke, on its fill, so there it is. If I want this item to be the same colour as the other item, if I tap on the pipette uh, and I can then tap onto the other item and it'll pick up all the formatting that I've put in there. So it'll pick, bring up the, it'll pick up the stroke, the, the font colour, the drop shadow, all those different things. Tap on it and there it is all picked up. Uh, I do want them different though, so I'm just going to uh, do that. And I am going to make them slightly transparent as well. So I'm going to move the fill across and move the opacity down. And I'll do the same on uh, this one as well. Because uh, what I want to show you is how we can actually then overlay these items uh, so that we can see through and we can mix our colours up and what have you. Useful when you're doing Vens and what have you. What we can do with the pencil tool as well is draw a line between objects so that we can connect them up. If I just draw a line across like that, that was pretty random. I can't draw another line across. Okay, doesn't work anymore. But what we can do and do that. If I just tap onto the arrow there, I can use the duplicate option and I can actually then uh, give a bit more impact to what I'm doing by having more lines there. Now you may want to actually format your line as you want it uh, before you start moving more of them around. So if I want that there to be a bit thicker, I go to my connection section. And note while we're in connections you can do lots of things. You can change how bended the line is uh, based on what sort of connector uh, you have. 
not all the connectors will prove to give you a curve um, it depends on what you're doing with it um, but certainly I want to on the stroke section make it that, that line a bit thicker and I want it to have a different colour and I want it to have a bit of a, a drop shadow as well so that now when I duplicate it uh, we end up with the same sort of options coming across and if I just then start moving this around what's really nice is because I've got those connected no so matter where I move my other object, so the lines change. Okay, so I'll just duplicate that, get another one, and what I can do then, changing the fill colour. There we go. I can then build up some more lines. That's so I'll draw one line. Um, whoops. Draw a line from there to there. And again, if I want to have the formatting like previously, select the one. Uh, so select the item you want to uh, change the formatting of, tap on the pipette, tap on the item you want to pick the formatting up from, and it will just uh, carry that across. No, I keep making the mistake. If you are wanting to move things around, it's always better to use the select tool here to then start moving things around, rather than trying to do it with the actual pen tool. Because you end up starting to draw things by mistake. I've pretty much covered uh, the items that are here, stroke, fill, text, canvas, and we've got the connectors we talked about a second ago as well. What else can you do with Graphio? Well, you can bring in your own pictures, so you can uh, grab yourself a wallpaper that you could use for your background uh, image, just drop it in, and then if you press and hold on it, like so, you then get the option to send it to back so that it becomes the, the actual background. Uh, and I'm just going to stretch that now. Uh, so that will then become my background. And that's a, a really nice way of getting quality backgrounds in. Don't stretch it too far. Remember we're on uh, A3, I think. If I go up to the canvas, it will tell me. A3. So you're going to want a nice, <clears throat> quite a big image, uh, unless you want uh, it to look really pixelated behind. But it's a really nice way of making your work now look amazing. In addition to the pictures you can bring in, you can also use the library of shapes, basic shapes and what have you that are there. You've also got some nice little doodles. Um, I'd urge you to have a little look around see what's in there. Uh, you can also make your own shapes and add them to your user library, should you so wish. Okay. Um, then we've got the export options, and uh, we've got, uh, just go back a second, there we go, uh, email, camera roll, prints, video presentation. Um, what it does, if you choose video presentation, uh, it will um, export your um, video from your Graphio in the order you've made things. You choose how long you want each section to be uh, frame by frame, uh, each item you've added to your um, Graphio documents is equal to one frame and you can choose how long you want those to be on the screen for between one and ten seconds. You then just export it as a video and you can use that in other uh, apps such as iMovie or Pinnacle, do some narration over the top of it, add in some background music you've made in another app for example, lots of things you can do with it. My favourite option though is send email because that's where we get to the really tasty export options. So we've got PDF, which is our um, vector export, which means, again, we can send these off and get them printed uh, really, really nicely. Uh, PNGs and JPEGs are staples for sharing online documents. Uh, personally, I prefer PNGs, but you have what you like. <clears throat> the Graphio document option enables you to share your Graphio designs with other colleagues. And that's where audio notes comes in as well. Because as you're making your documents, if you're working collaboratively, then what you can do at each section is, is record a little audio note about the thing that you're actually working on. And then when you send the Graphio document off to your colleague or whoever it is you're working on it with, those audio notes will be embedded within there so that the person knows what you're actually talking about or writing about on your design. Then just go to compose, and all the documents or, or all the document types you want will then just be appended uh, or sorry attached to your email, ready for you to send off. That's about it, really, for Graphio. Um, as I say it's, it's an amazing tool for creating some amazing designs. I'd love to hear about how you're using it, maybe for your classroom, maybe with the students. The options on your uh, library here we have got flowchart options which are really really good for mapping out databases and uh, computer programs so lots of really good options there so I hope you found it interesting uh, my name is Mark Anderson thank you very much for listening you can find me online at www.ictevangelist.com and uh, I hope to hear from you soon thank you very much